Well, everyone, as you may or may not know, this is Linkara. You you may have heard of him on the internet's doing things with comic book stuff. Um, seeing as Tara is, I think this is Tara's final round of chemo. Someone else might correct that, but uh, Frost. Yeah, she's she's out this week again, but uh, Linkara has been gracious enough to step in and join us for this portion. Nine. Um. <laughs> Yeah, aside from, uh, you know, 3D Printer Rose, how you been? Oh, uh, things been going fine. I'm working on episodes right now. I'm almost on pro, uh, primary editing on the next episode as I try to speed along finishing up all the episodes that were supposed to come out in April and then work on the May ones. I'm a month behind. There's never enough time. There's never enough time. It's you know what it is. It's the it's the super hour long episode stuff. I did that Sandman retrospective. Each episode clocking in around an hour or more, and of course, it takes so much more time to do that to, to edit that stuff. This, but it's okay. I'm making progress. The scripts are faster when I don't have to make them when I don't have to make them like fifty gajillion pages long. Well, you don't have to make them any page. Yes, I do. I don't know if you noticed this, Nash, but I'm a massive windbag. <laughs> no. No. You are. Right. What fresh hell have you for us today? I've got some special night tonight. That's for night. Sure. Let's get the intro rolling. Each week. Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? Now, here's here's a weird thing. I, I don't expect... Some industries, you expect cutthroat behavior, right? It's mm -hmm. session kind of shit, right? You're, you're like, okay, well, yeah, you yuppies, high, high five. Yeah, even in some illegal industries, you expect cutthroat behavior. Never in my life have I seen this. But one man in Australia was determined to corner the market. On bouncy castles. I have never in never. It, it, yes. Okay, dude, dude. You you understand that they're not real castles, right? You don't have to invade enemy castles to take to take them over and burn them down. I tell you that last season of Game of Thrones just got all fucked up. Um, <laughs> James Balcom. Oh oh, I all right, who wrote this? Who wrote this? Emily Woods. Oh, okay. James Balcom had a burning desire to be number one in Melbourne's jumping castle game. His plan to bounce to the top had worked so far. After paying arsonists to set fire to competing bouncy castle businesses, his company, Awesome Party Hire, now ranked number one on Google. Business was so successful, he had been able to purchase property for the first time in his life, but Balcom became worried police would notice his own factory was still standing. His business would have to be next. He called his arsonist for hire, Craig Anderson, showed him through his kangaroo flat factory, pointing out his jumpy castles, saying he would fill up some jerry cans with petrol. March 6, 2017, Anderson poured petrol along the floor of Balcom's shed and set fire to it. As it became engulfed, Balcom, his wife and son, were in a nearby house. The shed was insured for hundreds of thousands of dollars, which Balcom planned to pocket. Uh, three days later, Anderson was arrested, and here's the best part. He dobbed Balcom into police, naming him as the scared of the fires. See, when you hire an arsonist, that that's a trans that's not like a, a, a brotherly bond. That's a transactional and and they are not going to jail for you. This this isn't like, you know, snitches get stitches. You're a bouncy castle magnate. What the fuck were you threatening him with? Gotta gotta pay your employees well. You th you think? 
is oh sorry the the bouncy castle arsonist union needs to negotiate a better contract and you know going getting in 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 going to jail and becoming known as the bouncy castle arsonist is not going to give you much cred behind bars they're going to call you bouncy for the entire time you're in there for 10 years you're going to be bouncy that's you. <laughs> um, many of the fires were unsuccessful. But uh, uh, Anderson, they had to go back multiple times, offered only $2,000 per fire. So you're doing this on the cheap already. Um, oh, just really? You can't figure out any other way to, to, to compete with the bouncy castles. Maybe, I don't know, three balloons. Like cutthroat industry, that. First you'll get the castles. Then you'll get the money. Then you'll get the women. What the fuck? Uh, like in background, 2019, Vegan and I went to this traveling... Uh, thing like the world's largest bouncy castle. Uh, it's like it's like they traveled around the, on the USA, and it's and and they did not lie about that. The thing was huge, like 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 football stadium size with various sections. You could go into one area that's also that also served as a as a tight ball pit that was like waist deep. Uh, like several people got trapped in there, like including ourselves because we couldn't pull ourselves out. We were like helping people out as we were able to escape it. Bouncy cancels are big business, Nash. It's super secret. Hold on, hold on. All right. If you're doing a bouncy castle business and it's not succeeding, you know what you do? Something else. <laughs> you know, you can sell your, your your supplies to one of your rivals then, who would like, you know, be happy to take on, you know, more additional supplies. Like this was 2017 and he started doing this. They just caught him. That's why this is. Yeah, but he fled to he, he fled to Vic, uh he fled to Perth and started up a fraudulent stamp operation. They find him via the fra fraudulent stamp operation, yeah, or because because I was gonna say, like like I'd you like to be the cop assigned to the best castle arson, and it takes you six years to track down. I can't sleep I'm just on the cusp of solving that. <laughs> Gotta find the one arm bouncy castle magnate. <laughs> now, this, this, I mean, it, this guy, he, it was this, he was doing all this shit in 2017. Sell your shit to a rival, dump everything into fucking crypto, you moron. That's the triple A forward. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's move oh, along. Oh what? Oh me, oh my, is what I said. Let's move along to another incidence of fire. Oh, is it, is it, is it, is it uh, arson or flame night tonight? Only in part, but I don't understand. It. I did a lot of stupid things when I was a kid. I had fireworks. A lot of them. Um, most of them involved G.I. Joes. Um... Which, now now that I'm an adult, I realize how much those things would be worth vintage. I really hate my... I hate 10-year-old me. I'm like, you little shit! We'd be rolling in cash right now, but oh no! You had to strap a fucking M60 to Storm Shadow! Um, but never did I ever come up with this idea for the fucking fireworks. I guess Pennsylvania is really fucking boring. Pennsylvania State Police looking for suspects accused of melting public toilet with fireworks. Melting. Bullskin Township. Pennsylvania State Police are asking for the public's help to identify the persons of interest in a criminal mischief incident. And there's a picture here. Let me, let me, let me see if I can bring that up for y'all. There it is. That, that was a toilet. It's gone now. There is no more toilet. What? Did it fall through the floor? Yes. 
According to officials, the suspects or suspects lit multiple fireworks inside the woman's restroom, causing the plastic toilet to melt into the cistern. I was confused. Like, how hot would it have to be to melt a porcelain toilet? You're like, well, you know, thermite is easy to make. Yeah, but they specifically said fireworks. True, but I'm just saying to everyone out there, thermite is easy to make. I'm looking at this picture. I'm just thinking, man, this is a weird remake of Silent Hill 4. Imagine you're in there trying to go to the bathroom and you st and you're presented with this. Like, how does your brain cope with that? It's like, wait, what? It, it's no, I don't have to go right now. <laughs> there was no more. There's no more toilet. It's just gone. This is an ex toilet. I'm curious what he, what was this person's goal was. Like, I know, I know we've been looking for the suspects, so we don't know, but I am very curious about what the answer is. This was someone aged 13 to 16 who thought, what if I do this and then did it? Because when you're a teenager, you are dumb as shit. Well, here's the problem now, Nash. It combines this the previous story. I've got to imagine there's no arrival plastic toilet salesman out there who was like, I got a great idea for an insurance scam. <laughs> Going across the country, burning down toilets, selling them new ones. <laughs> Lupin and Channel says, are we sure someone didn't just have a lot of Chipotle? Oh, me, oh, my, oh, me. Aaron says that toilet was a week away from retirement. <laughs> it just, it vanished. It's, it's like, it's, I can only imagine the smell coming out of that hole. Because not only do you have the melted plastic, you have everything else. You know, you're, you're, just, you got a bunch of fireworks. You think to yourself, what can I do with this? I know there's a toilet over there. We're going to have a great old fashioned Saturday night. You watch. Fun times. I've never been this bored in my life. I have never been so bored. I thought, let's go melt the toilet. Yeah, people, we, uh, Wiggy D says, oh, yeah, that smell is going to stick to everything. Yeah. This is, this, this is a, 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 a ring and runner prank that has, that, that went horribly wrong. It went in the wrong order. Yeah, just, just build a new bathroom at this point. That, that's all you can do. It's over. Ah, moving right along. There are these moments where you just, you think to yourself, they can't really be that stupid, right? I mean, it's, they're, they're these are grown functioning. They, they can't be that stupid. And yet, let me, okay, let me just put this out to the, before we go to the story, we put this out to the entire audience, okay? Puerto Rico. What do you need in order to fly? If, if, if you were in America, what do you need in order to fly to Puerto Rico? Uh, whatever you normally need to fly because Puerto Rico is, is U.S. territory. Thank you. See? How hard was that? Spirit Airlines asked Puerto Rican family to show passports, then denies them flight. Puerto Rican family traveling from Los Angeles to the island of Puerto Rico was denied travel on Spirit Airlines because the parents didn't have a U.S. passport for their toddler. Parents didn't need a passport, nor did their child. I love that the, 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 the article has to state this because Puerto Rico, Puerto Ricans are American citizens, are U.S. citizens, and Puerto Rico is not an international destination. Spirit Airlines apologized to the parents immediately after CBS News reached out the carrier looking for answers. Incident took place at Los Angeles International Airport on April 25th. 
Uh, Maribi Roman Torres, her husband Luis, and their two year old son Alejandro were traveling the island to visit family. The family reached a ticket counter at the airport that morning. Roman Torres said the agent asked to see her and her husband's passport. At first, she told me this is an international flight. I told her, no, Puerto Rico is not another country. It's U.S. territory. But she and her husband showed their passports to avoid a hassle. Then the agent asked for the passport for the toddler. Said the boy didn't have a passport. They offered two options. Accept the refund or reschedule the flight for a later date once the family could obtain a passport for the child. Um... They went over to JetBlue, and JetBlue was like, what the fuck? And JetBlue let them just, yeah, we'll fly you. What the fuck? I'm glad that, I'm glad that it wasn't like a real room and trip, because air flying travel is such a pain in the ass these days. So, like, I would have, I would have, like, at the very least, I would have had uh, uh, JetBlue talk to them, like, you guys know that they don't need a passport, right? <laughs> oh, you know. The account of that day has been fired. Oh, I know they're probably in the article, but still, like, Oh, you know, you know that if you're working a working a counter. The the jet blue people have been razzing them nonstop for this shit. Hey! Uh, hey Joey! I'm thinking about flying to Alaska. Do I need a pair a passport? No, just go ahead and look it up. I'll, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. In a similar case this month, Hertz apologized for denying a Puerto Rican man at car because he didn't have a passport. In this case, the man, Humberto Marchand, was presenting his Puerto Rican driver's license to an employee at a Hertz rental car counter in New Orleans, at New Orleans International Airport and was told he would need to show his passport. That's what's really driving me nuts. You work in an airport. I understand. Most people don't understand it because because territories and, and, and all that stuff, it's a it's it's a it's a weird thing. And it's why Puerto Rico should have statehood. Mm, yeah. That's a whole other conversation. But at the same time, if you're working in a travel office like this, it feels like this is information you should know and have already. Like, how many flights have you sent to fucking Puerto Rico? Were you asking every motherfucker for their fucking passport sent in the fucking Puerto Rico? What the fuck? <laughs> Are you this bad at your goddamn job? How did you survive? I mean, goddamn. Yeah, as uh, Rowdy in the channel says, it's like every they saw everything so Southwest had done and said, challenge accepted. Like, yeah, is there no cheats? Just the supreme assurance of your own ignorance. Oh, yeah, everybody in the fucking airport's been giving Spirit Airlines shit for weeks. You know, yeah. Aviga said that she actually refuses to fly Spirit just because, like, the last time she did so was such a horrible experience. <sighs> Moving right along. This is from Brussels. You know what? What you should okay if you are convicted of driving offenses and you're told not to drive anymore. What do you think that means? Uh, obviously, it means that I should go into a semi that I don't have a specific license for and drive that. Close. Oh, geez. I was, I was just kidding. What have we got here? The man declared unfit to drive causes accident in the court car park 30 minutes later. Questioning. <laughs> Was that deliberate? Was it spite or was he just incompetent? We'll get there. And has been declared unfit to drive by the police court in Hall. Acc caused an accident in the court's car park half an hour after being convicted. Man uh, went, went before the police court on uh, 14 February 2022, where, for reasons unknown, the police judge declared the man unfit to drive a car. However, that did not stop the man from getting back into his car and immediately causing an accident at the court parking lot. Um, in his defense, the man stated he did not know the police judge ruling was effective immediately. Additionally, he also stated that he no longer hears very well. Well, the good news is... 
He didn't have to go very far for his next try. <laughs> what stop shopping? <laughs> As the man had been convicted 14 times in the past, the judge also wanted to impose a fine of 4,000 euros. But the defendant could not pay the amount. The judge gave him 80 hours community service and also surrendered his driver's license. Wait, for three months? Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Forever. For three months. Wait, what? For three months. How do you keep your license after that shit? I didn't see this license. If the, the, the don't drive anymore with the fact that immediately, how does he hold on to his license before that? That seems like a thing you would revoke immediately. You get this back when you, you get this back when you when you thought about what you thought. <laughs> like how how are you in fucking Brussels and Belgium and you need a car? I thought they fixed that shit. Didn't Europe fix that shit? Y'all don't need a car. Or have I been lied to? I think some of them like having a car. Well, you should learn to drive the motherfucker. I drove, I drove in the and in the and in that. Like dude, the minute after you say, okay, don't do this anymore. Uh, bang! Right into some fucking idiot. I couldn't hear me. I'm stuck It's fine. Oh, the place to be, you know, and then the place to be is right back at the car room. Hold on, it's three. It, it, it's, it's two rooms down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we, we got another one. Um, this one's from Rhode Island, and uh, dude didn't even need to get out of his car because uh, he got everything taken care of in one place. Uh, much like them, much like the better. Man charged with DUI after crashing to Rhode Island State Police barracks. <laughs> Lincoln, Rhode Island. A drunk driving suspect crashed his star his car in the wrong place on Thursday. State police said they found a damaged SUV on the front lawn of their Lincoln barracks just after 1.30 a.m. It appears the driver lost control and smashed through two wooden fences near the entrance. Two? You'd think after you went through the one fence, you'd be like, hold up now, I gotta stop here. Clinton Bradshaw, 46, of Lincoln, was arrested and charged with driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Reckless driving and refusal to submit to a refusal to submit to a chemical test. No injuries were reported. <laughs> like I can almost have you ever hit like a gun to see like a, a an ant a fire ant mound and you hit it and you see what happens. All the ants just come running out like fucking swarm. I feel like it would be like this if you go and knock a cop shot, slam it. It would kind of be the same way. There'd be cops crawling all over the goddamn place. We well, used to live. Uh, 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 on a road that led to the led to the highway, but but the but the road that led to the highway was right next to a traffic school. So, like our first priority every single time driving on that road is drive under the speed limit and as carefully as possible because it's the most because it'd be the most embarrassing thing in the world to accidentally drive into that or speed past them. I think imagine that I. Is feeling that now. Don't make any sudden moves. Don't get their attention. Just very slowly. I, but I love how I love how he went through not one but two, um, two wooden fences. Do we have pictures here? I want. To, I think we have. We have some pictures. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, we got. We have a a couple pictures here. Really great pictures. Ah, shit. Too big. Too big. Make it bigger. Ah, fuck it. Oh, there we go. Now it's bigger. Cool. Now it's pictures. There you go. That's what he did. You, you'd think after you went to the first fence, you're like, what? I need to just slack off. No, no, just just power on fucking through. And then for a party at this point. Okay, now we're into the big one. Um, 
I had to check the date on this because this almost exact same thing happened before. Uh-huh. And you thought the first time this happened, <clears throat> excuse me, it, it made national news. And you think someone would go, we really shouldn't do this. And it wasn't that long ago. It was just last year. So I had to check the dates and everything. And no, no, it happened again. Employee held at gunpoint during unannounced active shooter drill at Michigan Psych uh, Hospital. Uh, yeah. The employee was instructed to walk through the Hawthorne Center during an unannounced active shooter drill is suing for the impact, he said, the traumatic experience out of his life. Hawthorne Center is a state-run psychiatric hospital for children. Um, the center held an active shooter drill. Patients and most of the staff were not told that a drill would be conducted. Many people inside the center said they were terrified when an announcement came over the loudspeaker that active shooters were on the premises. Even police had not been notified a drill was taking place. According to documents, 911 calls came in reporting active shooters and 22 police officers rushed to the center. Police inside the center were terrified employees. Working at the center said it was chaos inside the building. Northville Township wasn't the only department that responded. Northville, Livonia, and Michigan State Police were also there. When they arrived, officers quickly grabbed their tactical gear and heavy gear. Officers made contact with two people in front of the building. They told the officers they were employees and the active shooter situation was just a drill. The employees sprawled out on the ground until officers could confirm it was a drill. Um, so what, what happened was they, they told everyone there was an active shooter and the cops came up on people and, and were like, get on the fucking ground with loaded weapons. What the f- what? We had to know that it, was, that it was a drill. Because I'm looking to know who thought they should tell no one, especially not the cops, so the cops are the winner and don't come in and give them this reason. Well, I, th- I guess they figured someone would figure it out eventually when there wasn't an active shooter. They'd figure out it. You know, they just, you know, common sense, piece it together. It's, you'll figure it out. It's not a drill. You'll do totally fine. <laughs> Just the better be funnier over this. I joke about, 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 about some of the other stuff. This, this feels like you just lawsuit, but you're going to work in this field ever again. At a children's psychiatric hospital. Minors. <laughs> Who are already in distressed and, and, and just difficult situations. And now they have to worry about someone running around with a gun. What were you trying to drill for? Psychosis? Were you weird? I, I, I don't have my soundboard that I have on my streams usually right now. It's like hitting the Jesus as Christ button. <laughs> <laughs> I need a Jesus Christ button. I need a Jesus. Uh, can I have a Jesus Christ button, please? I need one. Jesus, can I get a button, please? It's with Monty Python. Can you hardly yell? Jesus Christ! What the hell? Love of God here, man. I. The fuck was the plan? It was quite a contrast we had up to on today's story, starting with bouncy castle arson and ending on, on oh, and just a, the active shooter is a draw we didn't think anybody about. Going on with the bouncy castle arson. The lawsuit is going to be fucking amazing. You'd think adults would think this, and... What's really blowing my mind is this happened in uh, early this year. Not six months before this happened at like a Catholic charity did the same stupid fucking thing. And it made national news. uh, Where the fuck are the grownups, man? 
They're doing active shooter drills or, 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 or driving their cars into government agency. I guess the first thing we learned this week is if you simply must do some sort of safety drill, contact the goddamn authorities first, you idiot. Don't just hope they'll pick it up as they go. Um, We have learned... Go ahead, hmm? go ahead sorry. Oh, we go ahead, sorry. We've learned that if you go through one wooden fence, you probably should stop before going through the other. That was a hint. We've learned that people who work in the airline industry don't know that Puerto Rico is, is U.S. soil. <laughs> yeah, but, but, at least... Kelly Spirit does it. Everyone else is is rightfully mocking them. Can, can you point to Florida? Can you point to Puerto Rico on the map? Okay, that's Australia. So no. Um. I'm not looking for I don't talk to any down there. Um. We we've learned that uh, if the if the judge says you can't drive anymore, that means now. That doesn't mean like a week for. That means now. That means stop now. Well, before it goes, I'm going to get, get as much driving as I can before. <laughs> you know, no. Learn that uh, just because you have a bunch of fireworks doesn't mean you have to stuff them into something. Remember that Simpsons episode where, where Bart puts a uh, cherry bomb in the toilets? Good times. Good times. Good times. And finally, we've learned, surprisingly... Bouncy castles is serious business, yo. Don't don't you mess with, with the bouncy castle mob. They will they will burn your ass, and only for two thousand bucks too. I can just imagine, you know, the bouncy castle mob. It's, it's it, the, the car is like a tiny tiny little black sedan. It pulls over, like twenty guys in black suits just pour out of the back. No, no, no. they'll be bounce out of it. There's a sunroof that they jump out. Like a trampoline. <laughs> a kazoo version of the Godfather theme. 